Alright, welcome back. Now in the last beta, besides the new faction ships and of course besides the destroyers, I also did fly the Caracal Trainer and pretty much the classic Caracal. The Caracal Trainer is one of those ships that I also personally did like a lot in the first two betas because this ship, besides using missiles, is also very robust and it offers excellent performance for its price and it offers excellent performance for the vast majority of the game. Now, I did use this ship for anomalies and for missions and I'll start this with pretty much missions because this ship is very good at uh, doing the advanced missions in the game and you can even do the tier 5, 6 and tier 7 missions with this ship. Now of course you will be required to have decent skills for that because this ship is a, after all a trainer and trainers are a little bit weaker compared to the original counterparts so it will be interesting to see how this ship will perform now. I did look at the stats and I can say that the stats of this ship are pretty much the same as in the last beta so this ship is unaffected by the changes or at least so it appears. If uh, if they did tweak out the ship for this, uh, for the full release, please tell me in the comments. I would like to know if there is anything changed to this ship. Now this ship has four high slots, three medium and three low slots, and of course two rigs, uh, each for weapons and each for engineering. And for the weapons, I use the MK5 rapid missiles. They are very good for close range combat. They have very good DPS and they have very fast rate of fire. And I was thinking if I should uh, go with the ordinary missiles and I did see the 12 seconds reload and of course the 12 seconds uh, cycle on the normal missiles and well I decided to play, play around with the rapid missiles. On the medium slots I do have two Mark V Webifers and in the drone slot, I would recommend that you put a medium drone, but since I currently don't have a medium drone, I, I did put uh, a light drone, and of course I do have a lot of other drones in the drone bay. For the low slots, I do have a Mark V capacitor battery, Mark V shield booster, and of course a Mark V afterburner. Now, I did notice that this ship has some capacitor problems, and I blame those capacitor problems on my personal skills, since I still have to increase my afterburner skills to level 5, they're like level 4, and of course I still have to increase the afterburner upgrade skills, and pretty much that's the reason why uh, I'll be running low on energy pretty much most of the time. And I find it very interesting that with the afterburner I keep running out of energy faster than with a micro drive since in EVE Online the case is a bit different. In EVE Online you are going to run out of energy faster with a micro drive than with a afterburner. But again, I blame those uh, inefficiencies that I did encounter uh, in my case on my personal skills and I will absolutely increase those skills as, uh, as time goes on. Currently I am skilling those skills I think since I do need them. Well. The first mission, this is a tier 6 mission I think, and so far, now I did play a couple of these missions and I did go and force this ship a little bit more than usual. I was curious to see how much I can actually achieve with it and you can easily do uh, anomaly wise tier 6, 7 anomalies with this ship without much of a problem. And of course you can also do the 8, 9 and 10s, but you will have to have decent gear, decent fit and of course very decent skills for, for such, uh, for, uh, for these higher tier anomalies. Because keep in mind this is after all a tier 5 trainer cruiser and they are overall a little bit weaker than their, than their original counterpart. I think there is a 20% difference between the trainers and the original counterparts of the of the trainer ships, which again uh, I think is okay since the trainer ships are after all trainer ships and as such they need to be a little bit weaker than the original counterparts since these ships can also be repaired if you ever happen to lose them. But of course for that you will need vouchers, uh, which are a limited thing and if you run out of those, well then the ship is pretty much lost. Now here, uh, these 
these ships that I'm fighting are Galanta ships, pretty much the cruisers and frigates and of course destroyers. And they can be uh, dangerous if they get close to you since they can web you and they can warp disrupt you. And those things aren't looking good if the ship you're flying isn't equipped to tank or isn't equipped to take them out very fast. And uh, here I'll just show you what happens if you, uh, if you by accident focus on the wrong primary target in these missions. Since it will be interesting to see uh, how much this ship can tank with my current skills. My current skills for the shield are pretty high up and my shield boosting skills are also pretty high up. The only thing that's kind of killing my capacitor here is the afterburner since my skills for it uh, aren't that good at the moment. If I had better skills, then the energy, uh, then the capacitor would be in a better shape, since my current skills are mostly focused on micro-rob drives because of the Talvar. But well, uh, I will skill these skills very soon, pretty much they'll be ready for, they'll be ready in a couple hours from this point on. The first wave of enemies is slowly going down, and this is the last ship that's left on the field of the current of the first wave. The second wave will be interesting, since then I will be focusing on the I'll be purposely focusing on the wrong enemy, on the wrong ship, and I will let the destroyers and frigates get close to me, just to show you what ha what can happen uh, if you make a mistake by accident since after all this is eve and this game isn't that much forgiving on mistakes mistakes in this game can can be quite costly depending on the ship that you're flying okay now i'll be targeting that prototype while the well i'll be ignoring these other uh, these other destroyers and frigates the destroyers and frigates do carry webifers and disruptors so we should keep that in mind you should keep in mind that Galanta are using hybrid weapons, most of them use the close range hybrids, although overall hybrids have a lower range uh, than compared to the other weapons in the game, but they are quite good at close range and they do a really good damage to most of the ships at close range. After all, I did start the game as Galanta, so my first weapons were Raylians and pretty much hybrid weapons. And they are pretty good, really effective, and excellent against most of, excellent against most of the opponents in the game. Now here, I was uh, I was webbed as you can see, and my speed got halved, and the webs come from the destroyers and of course from the frigates, and now they are approaching me at a rapid rapid pace, and as you can see, my energy is also running kind of low. My shield is also taking some damage. And of course, my capacitor battery is still recharging, so this is risky. Since this is a caldery ship, and remember, if a caldery ship loses its shields, then it's pretty much toast, and the ship will die. And of course, after that you'll have to buy a new one, or use the vouchers and repair it. But in any case, losing a ship isn't the isn't the option in the in the majority of of time in the game so now I'll be working my way out and I'll be fighting my way out should I say out of this situation that I got myself into okay one of the stars is slowly going down well one of the stars is down my shield is at around 50% now and well my capacitor battery got revived and it's active as uh, my shield booster is active as well and I I think I am out of the woods now, because I have capacitor now, I have my shield booster active, and I am taking out these enemies very quickly and very efficiently. So, uh, if it happens that you make a mistake, don't panic, just align yourself somewhere and uh, pretty much burn towards that location, and uh, once you have, once you can warp, warp out. Warping out is in a lot of these situations the best the best thing to do in case you are scrambled and if in in case you can't warp again don't panic focus on the ship that is scrambling you kill it fast and then warp out usually these split second decisions are going to be 
crucial in such situations if it happens that you make a mistake. But uh, in the first place, you should avoid uh, making these mistakes. And in these missions, especially in the advanced missions and in the expert missions, always make sure that you target the smaller ship first before the bigger ones. Since the smaller ships are going to be fast and they are going to approach you quickly, at least quicker than the bigger ships. And the smaller ships are more likely to carry webifers and to carry disruptors. So they should be your primary target since they can be very nasty in the game. And especially if you're flying a large and slow ship. Large and slow ships will have trouble locking on smaller targets. And these small targets usually can ruin the day of the bigger ships. For example, cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships, and bigger. So smaller ships should be your primary target in the vast majority of the situations in the game. Now, of course, there is also uh, exceptions to this rule. In some cases, the cruisers are going to be the ones that are going to web you and scramble you. But cruisers are slower than frigates and destroyers and they're less likely to get close to you to pretty much web and scramble you. So frigates and destroyers should be your primary target in the missions and of course in the anomalies alike. Especially in the higher tier anomalies. In the higher tier anomalies you have ships who will love you, who will scramble you and who will nut you and they are very fast. And for that you also need uh, a ship to counter that. And pretty much that applies uh, to most of the to the most of the missions and anomalies in the game. Well, uh, now these are military missions. I think uh, I was quite unlucky and I did get a lot of the a lot of tier five of these missions. I didn't get any tier six or T7 like the first time unfortunately. But this will uh, this will have to do as well. Now uh, I, I'm thinking on how to how to rig this ship, and I think for the engineering rigs, or should I say for the combat rigs, I'll go with resistances since this ship has a decent rate of fire and has decent range, and pretty much so far I don't need to increase its damage since I'm quite satisfied with its uh, with it, with its damage with my current skills. Now of course if I used the bigger the normal missile launchers then everything would be a little bit more dif uh, a little bit more different i think because they have a lot more range and with those missiles you will have a longer reload time and a longer cycle but you will have a lot longer range and in some cases long range combat is the way to go especially in anomalies and in missions so another fit for this ship would be with a micro up drive with a uh, ballistic control and of course with the standard missile launchers that have the longer range and of course decent skills for the missiles since you will need those to utilize uh, the missile range and of course the missile the missile speed damage and pretty much uh, the rest of the missile stats and i personally uh, am going to try that out now i did think to place a micro up drive instead of the afterburner but sadly, I did not find any. I didn't. I did not find any micro up drives that will pretty much suit my needs, and uh, I did decide to go with the afterburner. But when I get the micro up drive, I'll definitely try out uh, that fit as well with a with a slightly modified fit for this ship. But currently, uh, it works really well and I am quite satisfied with this ship's performance at my current level. And of course, the current performance that you can see from this ship is pretty much equal to the performance of a Alpha clone. So if you're a Alpha clone and if you decide to go with this fit that I have, you pretty much do the exact same damage uh, as I am doing right now, because uh, the, my current skills for, this sh for pretty much these modules are currently the level of a alpha clone of course i'll be increasing those skills to make them uh, to make them more powerful just to see how much damage i can uh, squeeze out of this ship with several different builds and of course with several different fittings but at the very moment at the current moment i am indeed very satisfied with the performance of this ship 
doing tier 5, tier 6 and tier 7 missions with this ship is a lot easier than with a tier 4 Talvar. And that is also partially because I am using a afterburner, since afterburners don't have the signature radius penalty, and uh, that is helping me in not getting hit. While my club drives do have a signature radius penalty, and they will make your ship uh, be easier to target and easier to hit. But on the other hand, it will give you a decent speed boost. So in both cases, uh, it pretty much it pretty much depends on the build that you're going for. In my case. I like to have a micro updraft and a long range build because I can quickly go to my desired distance from the enemies and just snipe them from there without them being uh, capable of actually getting close to me, which is one of my tactics in farming and one of my tactics uh, for these missions. Of course, you can go for a brawler fit with a micro drive that also works as well, but that's for PvP. For missions, uh, you want to have speed and DPS and range. Since you, if they can't reach you to hit you, then you are pretty much safe from any incoming damage. In my case, uh, I am safe from any incoming damage because I am using a afterburner and I am orbiting at a decent range from these ships. Now I do get hit, but it is not uh, too serious since the afterburner is reducing my incoming damage. And of course, this ship has a lot of shield. Since it is a caldera ship, they have a lot of shield, and that is keeping me safe from any incoming damage currently. And well, so far, like I said, uh, I am pretty satisfied with the performance of the ship at this very moment. And of course, from this moment, it can only be better, because my skills are going to be better and better. Well then, uh, kind of also curious to test out the normal Caracal. After all, I will get most of the ships in-game, the Caracal included, the classic Caracal, and well, then it will be very interesting to see how that ship will perform in, in combat with these similar fittings. Now, like I said, I do expect a 20% difference between the Trainer Caracal and the Ordinary Caracal, because the Trainers are 80% of the originals, at least that's what I've been told, and hopefully I really hope that that information is correct, since uh, if not, feel free to correct me from any, from, uh, feel free to, co uh, to correct me if I do any mistake, uh, since I always, I'm always looking forward to improve myself and of course the content. So any recommendation, any, uh, any recommendation that you can think of, uh, feel free to tell me in the comments, I'll be appreciating it a lot. Okay, let's keep on taking out these these enemies. Now, I did find, I did say this uh, on the last video, but I do find the Galante missions and the Minimatter missions the easiest to do, because I think the weapons of these rats isn't that powerful as compared to the missiles and lasers of Kaldari. Very interesting. Um, I actually had problems with the Talar to clear the Amar advanced missions tier 5 because they usually track me very nicely and I usually run out of capacitor and I usually have to warp out like three or four times with the Talvar when I, when I do these missions. But when I do the Minimater missions and Galanta missions, I don't seem to have much of a problem against, against those ships. Now I know uh, that's partially due to the resistances of the ship's shields and armor of course and of course partially, to, partially due to the differences in the weapons of all these rats and of course all these all these ships and it is very interesting so if you're looking to quickly earn risk with missions the Galante and Mimater advanced missions are easy to do compared to the others and they do pay good and of course the loot is also very decent so I currently am doing these missions to uh, to make isk and I think so far besides me being effective I think I am also having fun at these missions. Since I'm more of a combat pilot and while well, people do enjoy mining, trading and these are very important jobs in the game, don't get me wrong. Mining and trading and pretty much the, uh, the market is a lot more important than the combat here in the game since the people who are mining and who are trading, who are selling ships and of course those people who are 
manufacturing items and ships and who are selling them, of course, are making the game alive because they are supplying us, players, and of course us combat pilots, with ships to fly and of course to use in combat. So it is very interesting uh, that it, that economy, that whole economy is very interesting. And uh, trading, and of course, like I said, miners and those who are manufacturing ships are very, very important for the game, for both EVE Echoes and for both, uh, and for both EVE Online. Currently, at this very moment, I have like, I, I think I have zero kills, zero PvP kills at the moment, compared to the thousand plus kills that I had in the first and second beta of the game. So yeah, um, that is something that, that is something that uh, I, that I did. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. Now this is, I think this will be the final mission of the video. Again, a tier 5. Unfortunately, I did not manage to catch a tier 6 or tier 7 anymore. The first tier 6 was very, was very fun, I have to say. I did enjoy it. It was exciting. And you should, like I said, uh, you should always take out the smaller ships. Now, for the Mimatar ships, they can also web you and scramble you. They also use these Nosferatus which are effective at around 8 to 5 kilometers. So if you are orbiting at around, for example, let's say 20 kilometers, and if you see the Nosferatu icon or energy neutralizer icon on the, on the, on the uh, above the overview, then you don't have to worry, since they are not actually taking any of your energy because they don't have range for, uh, for it to be effective. It works only at close distances. And that same applies to the player-driven ships and, of course, for our own module that we are using. Up from a distance, you can use them to pretty much scare someone, since most of most people don't know uh, that these Nosferatus have a limited range at the moment. So if you turn that on, bef before you even shoot at them, uh, they will see that icon and they will see a player approaching them and they're going to be scared and they're going to warp out. And I'm pretty much talking with my personal experience. Since I did have a lot of these situations where in anomalies I was attacked and I had to, of course to defend myself and usually before they can even get close to me I would turn on the Nosferatu on them and soon after that I would see them warping out even before I could uh, turn on my weapons to fire back which is a excellent defense tactic that you can use in case you get attacked in these anomalies which currently does happen a lot, and I did see uh, some pictures of some people have 10, 20, 30 kill marks. And well, you know, that's still not close to my record uh, on my Talvar trainer in the, in the last beta. I had over 600 on a single ship in the last beta, so <laughs> that's, that's something that is a achievement for me. But that was the beta, and this is the live version of the game, and I have to be a lot more careful in the live version, since there is no more data wipes, and if it happens that I do something like that ever again, well, I can guarantee that my head will have a bounty, and I don't want that to happen just yet. But of course, we will see what will happen. After all, in the end, I'll have to do PvP in one form or another, and I personally can't wait for that, since PvP in this game never got old. It is, it is as exciting as when I started EVE Online in 2009. And well, that's one of the, that's one of the good things about this game. It never gets old. All right. Well, I think this is the last wave of these rats over there, and after that, I can, and after that, uh, I'll be. I'll be getting to a station and slowly, uh, slowly wrapping things up. But I have to say, uh, this ship is very good. If you're looking for a decent PvE ship that is excellent uh, against rats uh, in all of these sectors and, of course, all of these systems, and of course, if you're looking for a ship that's excellent in anomalies and excellent in missions, then the character trainer is the ship that you should choose because this ship, at the very moment, currently is very powerful. And I do recommend this ship a lot, since this ship is excellent. Uh, currently, the missile ships in the game are mostly the most powerful ones for the, for the missions. And 
for the for PvP since they have the long reload time, they can be quite tricky to use in PvP. Uh, that's something that, that I didn't think about, but it is the truth. In PvP, they have these long reload cycles and, of course, uh, the long uh, weapon cycle. And it does take uh, some time to kill a opponent. If, uh, if of course, you don't have a scrambler or a disruptor, not a scrambler, then they have a high chance of escaping. But if you're using railguns and uh, if you're using if you're using railguns and if you're using lasers and pretty much the other weapons, then they might be more effective than missiles. Now, of course, these missiles can be fitted to one shot most of the ships, since in the in the last beta, my Talvar I did make my Talvar to hit 2.5k alpha, which was mostly enough to pop most frigates and to pop most uh, most destroyers. Of course, up to tier five. These tier 5 and above are powerful and they can withstand and of course we can fit them to be a lot more powerful than the ordinary destroyers. And of course uh, the faction frigates can withstand these hits as well since the faction frigates are also very powerful and of course the faction destroyers excluding the, the, fac the new one, the prototype. The prototype was fragile but it, it could kill most of the ships in a cycle or two. And of course, the same can be said about the Battlecruiser prototype. That thing was also ridiculously repowered. I managed to make it uh, have 15,000 uh, 15, alpha, and I did uh, hit someone uh, that much, I think. And it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous when I actually nailed that hit on, on someone in the last beta. I think I didn't, uh, didn't manage to record it. It was pretty much right before the servers closed right before the last beta ended and that was I think my highest single hit ever in uh, EVE Echoes so far and we'll see uh, we'll see I'm, I'm very curious to uh, see how the prototype will work and well can't wait to actually get my hands on the prototypes as well since those ships I think I'll also fly them a little bit uh, until I, I pretty much just to test them out to see how they work, how they compare with the ordinary destroyers and pretty much ordinary battle cruisers. But uh, when the time comes, I'll be switching fully to the Cinnabal, and of course I'll be switching fully to the other faction cruisers. And those ships are my goal currently. Well, then, uh, looks like that Stabber isn't having um, that Stabber is not having a good day. <laughs> he is getting just absolutely destroyed by my missiles. Now, twice a faster reload time on these missiles is going to be very good, since the, the, the DPS on the rapid missiles is going to be high in most cases, which is actually pretty good, since you want to have high DPS uh, in most situations. Of course, alpha damage, uh, alpha strike is also important, I used it in the first two battles on my Talvar in PvP since it was ridiculous and it might work uh, with artillery and of course with the bigger missiles. Well, with that being said, I hope that this was helpful, I hope that you enjoyed, it was my pleasure to play this game for you. Fly safe, stay safe and well, I'll see you next time. Take care.